Numerical Computation, Chapter 3, Additional Video, Number 4. This video can be viewed after the additional video number 3 for Chapter 3. In this video, we talk about a very popular curve fitting method using Bezier curve. A Bezier curve is a parametric curve very frequently used in computer graphics and related fields. The curve is defined by a set of so-called control points. There could be m plus 1 of them, so they're labeled as from p0 to pn. Here, the first and the last control points P0, Pn are actually the end points of the curve, while the intermediate points generally do not lie on the curve. And therefore, they are called control points. They are used to control the shape of the points. And the number n is the order of the curve. For the simplest case, when n equals 1, we have two points here, p0 and p1. This is called linear Bezier curves. So the curve is simply a straight line that connects p0 to p1. One can parameterize the line by the parameter t, and we can have the following representation. So we call B, Bezier curve, from P0 to P1 as a function of t, equals P0 plus the parameter times P1 minus P0, that is the, the direction. One can also rearrange the terms and write this as 1 minus t times p0 plus t times p1. So here, 1 minus t and t are numbers where p0, p1 are points, which can be vectors. The expression is valid for t ranging from 0 to 1. As you see, if t is between 0 and 1, then the coefficient 1 minus t and t here are both non-negative, and they add up to be 1. So this expression is also often called a convex combination of p0 and p1. Now, as the parameter t varies from 0 to 1, the point goes from P0 to P1. As you can see, when T is 0, we just get this term. When T is 1, and we just get that term. So, And therefore, on the graph, we'll see when T equals 0, you are at P0. And uh, as T increases and approaches 1, you move to P1. We now consider three points, P0, P1, and P2. And these curves will be called quadratic Bezier curves. The curve goes from P0 to P2 using P1 as the control point in the following sense. When it exits P0, it goes in the direction of P1. And then, at the end, when it enters P2, it will enter from the direction of P1. Now, again, we can use T as the parameter for this curve. And the curve can be defined, actually, in a recursive way similar to the one we did for the linear Bezier curves. It has the following expression. B, 
for P0, P1, P2. And this notation means it's a Bezier curve using P0, P1, P2 as the control point in that order equals a convex combination of two Bezier curve at a lower level. So that's a Bezier curve from point P0 to P1. And here is a Bezier curve from point P1 to P2. Note that these two are actually the linear Bezier curve that we just talked about. And they are parameterized with the same parameter t. And then we multiply this one by 1 minus t, the one on the left, and the one on the right is multiplied by t, and we add up these two functions together. So plug in the expression for these linear Bezier curve here, taken as a same convex combination of the two points, P0 and P1, and do exactly the same thing for this linear Bezier curve, a convex combination of P1 and P2 in the same way, we get this expression. And this is valid for t ranging from 0 to 1. And we see that in the end we get a polynomial of degree 2 in t. So this above expression could be interpreted as the linear interpolant of corresponding points on the linear Bezier curve from P0 to P1, that is this one, and the one from P1 to P2, that is this one, respectively. Now we can rearrange the terms and collecting the points P0, P1, and P2 as the like terms and collect the coefficients for them. And we have this expression. So for P0, we'll have 1 minus t squared. For P1, we'll have 2 times 1 minus t times t. And for P2, we have t squared. We would like to call the attention to these binomial coefficient. Basically, we have 1, 2, 1. That's the binomial coefficient for a quadratic polynomial, x plus y squared, when you open it up. Once this expression is given, one can um, easily differentiate and get the expression for the derivatives. A simple computation will give you this following form. So the derivative would be a polynomial of degree 1. So using these derivatives, we can check the derivative at t equals 0 and at t equal 1, that is, at the two end point. If you plug in t equals 0, then the second term is gone. I only have the first term, so one gets 2 times p1 minus p0, which indicates that the curve actually would leave the point p0 in the direction of p1. Now, for the other end, when t equals 1, then the first term is gone, and we simply have only the second term. And we know that that is the point where the curve reaches P2. So we see when it reaches P2, the derivative will actually be in the direction coming from P1. Therefore, we verified this property of the Bezier curve that it should leave the first point in the direction of the second point and it should enter the last point in the direction of the second last point. So here is a graph illustrating the idea. So we have P0 and P1 and P2 in a two-dimensional domain 
and uh, from P0 to P1, I have a parameterization of the line by T. Let's say for a given T, the point is here. And for the line from P1 to P2, the same parameterization for, let's say, for that T, it ends at that point. And then I would connect these two points and draw a straight line in between and parameterize with the same T. And with that T, I would be at that point on the line. So that's for a generic T. And we let this T vary from 0 to 1, and you will get this curve that is exactly the quadratic Bezier curve that we just set up. Now let's add one more point, P3, and look at cubic Bezier curves. Once we have understood how to define the quadratic one from the linear one, then to define the cubic one from the quadratic one is exactly the same. We see that we have the quadratic Bezier curve from P0, P1, P2 here, and we have the quadratic Bezier curve from P1, P2, and P3. And using these two, we do the same convex combination, multiply the one on the left by 1 minus t, and the one on the right by t, and add them up to form the cubic Bezier curve from P0, P1, P2 to P3. So you can plug in the expression for the quadratic Bezier curve here and open up and collect like terms with a little bit of algebraic manipulation, one would arrive to this expression. And the expression is for the t value ranging from 0 to 1. So again, we call your attention to the binomial coefficients. We see we have 1, 3, 3, 1. One can now easily compute the derivatives of the cubic Bezier curves. And the expressions are given here. The first derivative takes this form, which is a quadratic polynomial. And you differentiate that one more time in t, and you get the second derivative, which is a linear polynomial. Here we give some examples of how a cubic Bezier curve looks like with uh, four control points. The one on the left, we have P0, P1, P2, P3 control points plotted like that, and the curve here is the red one. That's a cubic and Bezier curve. And on the right, we have control points that goes a little bit zigzag, and uh, the Bezier curve is this one in the middle that is smoothly going from the first to the last. And you see that as it exits P0, it points in the direction of P1. The same thing here, when it exits here, it goes in the direction of the first, the next point. And then when it enters the final point, it enters from the direction here. And the same thing here, when it enters here, it enters from this direction. So once one has understood how to increase the order by 1, then you can easily generate the Bezier curve of any order recursively. So we would have for Bezier curve from P0 to Pn that can be defined as a convex combination of the Bezier curve from P0 to Pn minus 1, removing the last point, plus t times the Bezier curve from P1 to Pn, removing the first point P0. One can then apply this recursively for many layers until to the end, the last one, that will be you reach the point P's and uh, 
after some computation, when obtain this expression, you can collect the points p0, p1 together and, and lump the coefficients. And this is what you have. So this summation, one can um, write it up as a summation sign as well, because we see that um, this vector here, n1, is actually the notation for the binomial coefficient. So the binomial co coefficient of i from n is n factorial over i factorial and n minus i factorial. Okay, And then you can write it compactly with a summation sign like that. And this expression is for t from 0 to 1. When t is 0, you get the point p0, and when t is 1, you will get the point pn. So these polynomials, um, b, i, and t, that stays in front of the point pi, we write it again, the binomial coefficient times 1 minus t to the power n minus i times t to the power i, they are very much studied in the literature. These are known as the Bernstein basis polynomials of degree n. One may also wish to express the Bezier curves into a polynomial of t. You can do that. And then one can write it as b of t equals the summation of all of the powers of t times the coefficient in front. After algebraic manipulations, you can express the cj's in with this complicated form. It can be written as a summation of all that, as well as a product and a summation of this. So if you're curious of how these expressions are obtained, I encourage you to work it out and play with it. That's all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.